Thank you for the opportunity to share my views on this very important issue of, of child safety. My name is Michael Kaplan. I chair the New York State Traumatic Brain Injury Services Coordinating Council and have served for three terms as president of the Brain Injury Association of New York State. I've also chaired the American Association for Justice Traumatic Brain Injury Litigation Group and for the past six years have been teaching the only course in brain injury law at the George Washington University Law School. In addition to that, I maintain a private practice of law specializing in representing individuals with traumatic brain injury. Before I start my testimony today, I'd like to thank the New York State Assembly Committee on Health, Chairman Gottfried, Assembly Benedetto, for your concern about traumatic brain injury, the rights of individuals with traumatic brain injury, and improving their quality of life. Thank you. Thank you. You shake it, you break it. That's the simple fact in discussing and evaluating the risk to young children engaged in tackle football. There is only one reasonable conclusion that can be reached. Football is a concussion delivery system. The Centers for Disease Control has repeatedly confirmed that a concussion is a brain injury. It is uncontroverted that the lingering consequences of even a single concussion can plague a player for his or her lifetime. Multiple concussions complicate and slow the speed of any potential recovery. Multiple concussions increase the likelihood of devastating long-term disability. Allowing children to engage in tackle football is the equivalent of allowing them to play Russian roulette. This legislative proposal that we're considering today will protect the brains of our youth and save them from a lifetime of cognitive, physical, emotional, and behavioral impairments. A concussion is not just a bump on the head. There are real life permanent consequences to this injury. The impact of a traumatic brain injury often remains undetected and is misunderstood by professionals and family members. Additionally, as a child develops and grows the, the long-term effects of a concussion and brain injury are often ignored and misinterpreted. Families are left caring for children without the supports they need. The evidence continues to accumulate. Repetitive head trauma in football poses a significant danger. Children who are engaged in tackle football have a greater risk of sustaining life-altering brain injury. It is long overdue for us to protect our children's brains and prevent needless and preventable injuries from taking place. Change is often difficult. Over the last several years, we have learned about the adverse long-term effects of youth tackle football in causing head injuries and brain damage. Research has established that young players who failed to report concussion symptoms but endured subconcussive hits have su suffered significant damage to their cognitive abilities and memory. It is clear that we must attend to the bigger picture to weigh the risks of severe head injury and the future of our young children against the continuation of youth tackle football. A child's brain differs from adults. A young athlete's brain is still developing. The effects of a concussion or even smaller hits over a season can be far more detrimental compared to head injury in an older player. Depending on the exact age of injury and the location of damage to the brain, different cognitive and behavioral issues may manifest over time as the child's brain continues to mature. A child's future ability to learn may be compromised. 
their body composition, their neck circumference, the equipment provided, and their undevelopment, undeveloped judgment are all risk factors for significant brain damage because of head trauma. The danger is great, but the consequences of that danger might not be apparent for many years. It's only as the brain matures will the full extent of injury and damage be recognized. But by then, it's too late. The permanent brain damage will already have occurred. Complicating an accurate assessment is the fact that rapid physical recovery may mask the cognitive issues. Parents often observe their children's improved appearance obscures the ability of others to recognize a child's brain has been injured. As behavioral challenges and cognitive needs become more evident in school and at home, parents must confront the challenge of identifying whether the concussion could be a cause of their child's continuing problems. Safe tackling is a public relations gimmick promoted by clever but desperate marketing professionals. This proposal before you today is, this, I'm sorry, this proposal of safe tackling is designed to convince parents that it is safe to allow their children to expose their young brains to permanent injury. There is no such thing as a safe or concussion proof helmet. The rule changes in, instituted by youth football leagues are symbolic at best, and they are deceptive. They cannot be allowed to mask the truth. Accepting the premise that team sports, including football, promotes positive attributes in our children does not require tackle football. Wouldn't flag football present a reasonable and safer alternative to children smashing their heads and risking permanent brain damage? Protecting children from preventable harm is one of your fundamental mandates. Whether it's a requirement to use protective car seats, bicycle helmets, remedy exposure to lead spit paint, instituting concussion management programs in schools, this legislative body must pursue ways to protect our children and their very essence, their brains. I urge you to continue this important work to prevent needless injuries from occurring. As I always say, the best cure for a brain injury is prevention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have uh, one question. At the end of your testimony, uh, you uh, offer a couple of uh, uh, web links to, I guess, your website. And you say that uh, more information uh, about the topic is available there. Does that include uh, medical references and, and the like? It includes medical reference. It includes editorial support nationwide uh, in favor of a ban of youth tackle football. It includes public opinion, comprehensive look at this topic. Okay. Um, I don't think I have questions. Do you? I have no questions except to say, um, Doctor, thank you very much for being here and thank you for your testimony. It's much appreciated. I appreciate you calling me a doctor, but I am not a doctor. I am, I am a practicing lawyer. But. You have a demeanor of a doctor. I'd let you examine me. Okay? Well, <laughs> and, and I often point out that you and I, our degree does end in a D. The first letter is a J, but it, the second letter is a D, right? So, you know. Yes. Oh. And I occasionally say I'm not a doctor, but I play one in Albany. Um, so, but thank you very much for your testimony. And again, thank you very much for your concern about this important issue and the rights of people throughout this state who have sustained a traumatic brain injury.